<laughs> all right so it hasn't been more than a few hours but uh you know my case for two dollar leo uh has apparently struck a chord and uh taskmaster 4450 recorded a, a nice long video about uh you know, his thoughts on the subject worth a watch uh i recommend it but then in the discord uh Roland was asking me to uh <laughs> <laughs> to put out my case for $37 Leo. So if you've been watching the round tables, you know that uh, I, I had originally said at $37, you know, my Leo is worth a million bucks and then I'm out. <laughs> well, I've, I've bought more since then. So now my, my million dollar uh, uh, price point is $25. Like I've got about 40,000 Leo now. Uh, so, you know, so the $2 case is very conservative based on absolute worst case scenario. And, uh, my $37 case is, is obviously much more optimistic because, you know, it's, you know, 20, 23 and a half times uh, the, the market size. So what, uh, what I thought I'd do in this video, it would be to actually walk through how that could actually be possible. So, uh, you know, in the previous video, we talked about, uh, you know, the fact that there's 200 some odd uh, users, daily actives on, on Leo Finance. And uh, Testmaster made a good point that this is probably only counting blockchain transactions. So comments, posts, votes. Um, actually, I'm not sure votes would show up, but comments and posts, definitely. Uh, and then, you know, how much in ad revenue is that bringing in? And if we had to absorb all the inflation with just that, um, how much, you know, would, how many users would we need on a, on a revenue basis to, to get there? So and the answer was, uh, you know, 700, 710, which is, uh, you know, totally doable. Um, anyway, but that is obviously not uh, realistic because, you know, as as the popularity of Leo grows, the desire to hold the tokens will grow, uh, more people will be speculating on it, and more people will be staking and curating uh, or, or staking miners in order to receive uh, a cash flow. So, you know, right now, the ratio of the of the uh, market value to the to the ad buyback value is about 40, 41, 40 point eight here. So that got me thinking for a second that, okay, so if we grow the user base by you know x times, then uh, that is actually going to simultaneously increase the demand for the token. So instead of just a linear growth, like we're seeing in this model, we're actually gonna get a square law growth because more people will create more demand uh, for the token. So on a marginal basis, you'll have uh, that exponential uh, curve. And you can kind of see that uh, if you look up, um, you know, supply and demand graphs, let's see, let's see if I can spell supply and demand charts you will see two curves. And this is the, the standard formulation. You have a demand curve where uh, at, as, as uh, quantity increases, the demand actually decreases and, you know, for a given price. And basically uh, people who want to buy want to buy as much as possible for as cheap as possible, which is up here. And people who sell the supply want to sell for as many as possible as for as much as possible, which is up here. And then, you know, they have downward sloping um, curves, which are never actually defined. And where they meet is the equilibrium point. And so we have quantity here and price there. So uh, these two particular curves intersect uh, at a particular uh, price quantity coordinate. Now, what happens is, um, you know, Leo is kind of interesting in that the supply is fixed. Uh, there's, you know, there's a certain amount of inflation per day. So we really just have a demand curve. So if we have, ooh, that looks terrible. If we have, can I do a line? I don't even know how to do lines on this. Okay, and then, nope, I'm not trying to do a spline. Let's do, come on. All right. So here's our P and Q axis, right? Uh, text, I need to honestly see, I don't use this very much. P and Q. And then in that, in this axis space, you have a demand curve for Leo. And as it so happens, you know, we are at, 
whatever it is, 11 cents right now. So we are, you know, here for uh, whatever Q prime is, right? Q prime. All right. So because the inflation is fixed, then Q can't actually change. So the only thing that can change here is the where the demand curve is. And when demand increases, we get a shift to the right. So basically we get a little movement like this where the whole thing just shifts to the right. And it goes like this, right? So now Q is over here and price is up here. Actually, I guess this should just be regular, regular Q instead of Q prime. Anyway, uh, so the point is, is that with the, with the fixed supply, the only way the only way demand can express itself is by rising price, and it does so because these are nonlinear curves. It does so in a nonlinear fashion, and that's where that square law comes in uh, that I was talking about before. So, um, you know, each each different component of that square law demand is going to have different coefficients and everything, but we can we can just ballpark it as you know with within order of magnitude uh by saying you know it's just you know a square law so if we go back to our leo chart here so we know that the current demand is going to be um so users is 200 and demand is whatever it is it's just scale it to 100 and you know, the product of those two things is 20,000. Okay. So if we get a, a growth factor, let's say of, let's say 10x, right? Uh, 10. So then we're going to have users increasing by, by 10x and demand increasing by 10x, right? So let's say demand zero. And so for a growth factor, we're going to get demand one is going to equal this times, oops, this times that times this times that. So now we go from 20,000 to Two million. So, the the factor there is not seven hundred or or forty or whatever. It's actually uh, a lot bigger. It's ten thousand. Or sorry, ten thousand square root of ten thousand, a hundred. Um, because you know that's just because I picked a growth factor of ten, so ten squared is is a hundred. Um, so, you know, if we get a ten x bump in in demand and a 10x bump in users, then we grow 100x effectively. So, you know, the, uh, the question is at what price does this make for $37? So uh, let's take a look. And again, this is just order of magnitude, right? So uh, instead of 100, we just need to be, or sorry, we need to be, uh, let's see, so price zero is 0.11 and price two, price one is $37, right? So the price one, price zero ratio is that, okay? So 336. So now let's go ahead and goal seek this. The growth ratio. Well, actually, this should be over here. This is the. Uh, <laughs> you count me, me. I gotta make everything right. So, let's go ahead and goal seek this. What if goal seek? I set that to three thirty six by changing this number right here. Okay, so the number is 18, 18.3. And again, order of magnitude, not exact, ballpark figures. All right, so 18x. So if we grow the 
uh, the user base by 18x, assuming there, you know, there's a concomitant demand increase, um, then we're going to see, you know, a price of $37. Okay, so uh, users would be this times that. So again, we're back to 3,600 uh, 3, users. So, you know, that's that's actually kind of the same as what we saw over here, where we got 3,553, so it's 3,666. So you can see the, the, the change in dynamics uh, of what you're expecting can change the result significantly. You know, with such a micro cap coin, these kinds of swings are certainly possible. You know, we saw, you know, uh, in, in Taskmaster's video, he talked about uh, some of those those some of those high flying DeFi tokens like uh, like YFI and uh, Sushi and and you know all the rest of them, and you know they had these huge spikes and huge uh, crashes. The thing that makes Leo different is that yeah, I think we'll get a huge spike. <laughs> I put a lot of money into into that idea, and uh, there will be a retracement afterwards, sure, but it's not going to be what's it's not going to be round trip. It's not going to be explode up and explode down and just come back to where you start. The difference is, is that there's an actual product here and, you know, those users create demand. And so, you know, the, the value that the users have, users place on the token and earning the token creates a higher floor, you know, as the user base grows. And, and that's the same kind of square law uh, sort of behavior. So, you know, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying it's entirely possible. So, anyway, uh, that's it for me. And hopefully this is the last video of the night. <laughs>